Hey guys, it's Lee. Uh, I've got a Yamaha SVHO supercharger clutch pulled out of my jet ski. It's a 2017 GP1800. Uh, back then they didn't have the HO SVHO denomination. It was SVHO only. Um, but what I've got here is the supercharger clutch. It's the new part number 6ET17800 quadruple zero. It's listed as Yamaha as a gear unit assembly, not a supercharger clutch, not a sprag clutch. You won't find it listed under those names. Uh, gear unit assembly is what they're calling it. I have previously taken this one apart. Um, just things to note is this ski is four summers old, three full years. I've got 228 hours on this clutch before it finally went out. Um, running a currently a stage two. I've got a fizzle intercooler with a tile 50 millimeter blow off valve. Uh, I think that blow off valves and throttle control are the utmost importance to the life of your clutch. I know a lot of guys are getting short hours. Uh, a lot of guys are getting long hours. I think there's a lot to be said for how the rider treats the machine as anything. Maintenance is key. Um, do my oil changes every 25 hours on the ski. Filter every 50. I know that's a lot more than what the manual calls for, but I figure the RPMs, these things are running heat and pressure. Uh, number one killer of engine oil. Run Yamalu 4W 1040 only with the Yamaha oil filter never had any problems with either one of them so like i said i've already got the horseshoe clips off of it um i don't know the technical names of the internals of this clutch so i'm just going to leave it basic and i'll call it the inner race outer race sprag and ball bearing if you guys know the names of it if you know the different parts let me know i've always loved to learn uh, i'm not opposed to correction a wise man loves correction as i've come to know so it's good stuff um but what i've got here i've taken it apart and it basically this clutch is going to disassemble into about five different pieces uh this is considered non-serviceable the older clutches i know a lot of guys had rebuild kits for them uh, i've seen people recently asking about just getting the sprag and replacing it um as many times you've seen me post on the internet i'm not going to say you can't do it and that it wouldn't work i'm going to say i wouldn't recommend it and i want to show you why um, and also to give you a little insight into how this guy works. So essentially a sprag is nothing more than a one-way clutch. I'm um, gonna pull this bearing off of here to get my hands a little more freed up. Uh, what you've got here is just essentially a roller bearing. This keeps your inner and outer races uh, separate from one another. This is what gives you your rolling ro rotation uh, without bind here. So this clutch, I think I've already got it locked up here, unfortunately. But so you take the bearing out, you've got back here a backing plate, which is this guy here. Um, just knock it out real quick. So this backing plate here, uh, you see some wear, some movement on this guy. Uh, I'll post some still images of this stuff. I don't know how well this phone's going to focus on it while I'm trying to show you here. But anyway, this, this guy just keeps your sprag back here, which is down inside of it, securely locked in place. Um, so what I've got it broken down to now is three pieces. Again, don't know the technical names. I'm calling it inner race, uh, or drive. This comes directly off of your crankshaft. Your crankshaft input is going to be right here. That's going to be your bolt that's torqued to 59 foot pounds that you see in your instructions. You've got input drive to the splines here. This inner race via back here you can see the sprags kind of hidden up underneath there uh, and when this guy is assembled uh, he sits in the ski pretty much is going to look about like that so you're not going to see much but so essentially uh, is a series of 24 this is 24 sprags in here I've counted them it's 24 they look like a dog bone uh, it's a one-way clutch is what it is it's a drive unit that as your centrifugal force so your crankshaft here, you're going to be turning this way. You'd be running, uh, if you're sitting on the ski clockwise, if you're facing the front of the ski from the, uh, say where the gas tank is, you'd be counterclockwise. Depends on how you want to look at it. But as this guy starts to drive, your inner here is going to turn and is going to force this to come around. Uh, super driver, supercharger overdrive ratio. These teeth run against up into your idler the idler has a significantly smaller input near about to the same as what this drive for your oil pump is 
Uh, I don't know the math. I failed to count them. I really wanted to, to tell you guys I could have told you exactly what the overdrive ratio is. Uh, if anybody knows, feel free to comment. Let me know. It's basic math. Teeth divided by teeth equals ratio. A large drive gear to a small ratio in your idler increases your overdrive. Whatever that math works out to be will tell you what that portion is. Then that idler gear, again, very large on the output. It goes very large output to a very small drive. This drive here obviously is the clutch, but assimilated up into the supercharger. Same situation, you have a double overdrive. This ratio to the idler, the idler to the supercharger. That's the shaft speed, which is what your RPM on your engine drives that shaft speed to the supercharger, which is what builds your boost. I don't know exactly what it is. I've been told. I think it's about 7 or 8 to 1, somewhere in that range. It's very uh, open to debate, as I have not counted them. I don't know. So regardless, you, uh, you build that supercharger shaft speed up. you got a lot of movement. We'll just say uh, just 50,000 RPM might be a good estimate just to throw numbers at it. So you got that supercharger shaft flying right now. You're building a lot of boost. You uh, close your throttle. Supercharger speed has to go somewhere. Engine is going to slow down faster than that supercharger is. The engine has four cylinders under compression. Uh, you're going to lose that pressure. You're going to lose your fuel and your spark. You're going to deadhead against compression. It's going to immediately drop the engine RPM very, very quickly. Supercharger is only pushing against air. Air compresses. You compress it. It's got to scrub that speed some way or another. So that's your differential here. Your engine now slows down. Your supercharger, this thing's heavy too. This is about a pound and a half right here when it's fully assembled. Your idler gear is probably six to seven ounces. And then your supercharger shaft and wheel, a few more ounces there. You've got a lot of inertia going here. So what happens, this guy slows down. As he slows down in the crank, again, it's driven by teeth. There's no slippage here. Your slippage is in these sprags. So as this slows down, this guy continues to freewheel and spin fast. Uh, you guys idle it on the hose at the house, in the river, the, the Gulf of Mexico, wherever you guys are riding. You'll see this when you'll hear it. Sounds like something kind of decelerating. Sounds like a gear noise. That would be the sprag moving. These teeth against the idler, the idler against the supercharger, all that stuff slows down and comes to a stop. It's a very normal noise. If you don't hear it, you have problems. Check your ski. Something's wrong at that point. So you decelerate your input, this guy here free wheels. So he will continue to free wheel until that math equals supercharger drive RPM equal to the crankshaft. At that point, these teeth start to semi-engage. So that doesn't happen. Say if you let off the throttle or you hit your rev limit or you maxed out, you got a hot tune and you come out of the water and all of a sudden it revs up, you hit your rev limiter, engine RPM drops, comes back in, Engine RPM speeds back up. This guy freewheels, he locks, and starts to drive your supercharger again. It's a one-way clutch. There is designed to be no slippage in here. It only slips in the deceleration range. If you start to have a symptom that feels like turbo lag or a delayed input of power or pressure, if it's not your blow-off valve sticking, it's your clutch starting to go. So what happens as these teeth in here look like a dog bone, they start to wear. And as you can see now, now it's out of the ski and it's the, the pressures tell the truth. This thing still locks up pretty quick. It looks good, but I'm telling you guys, you put it in that ski. Um, stage two running uh, Reva claims about 350 to 360 horsepower to set up the way it is. A lot of force coming into here builds up fast. This thing will slip. And what happens is these dog bones that you see is actually they will flip the other direction because the ends get worn off of them and your inner to outer i'm sorry your inner to outer race clearance doesn't change the edges of these teeth wear off and they actually break past even and allow it to free wheel forward that's when you lose your boost um 40 miles an hour 5,000 rpm is the common thing when mine went this guy was still running slightly it slipped a lot but it was still running I was getting about 5250, 5300 RPM. I was running 46 on the CanDo Pro GPS module. So 
somewhere in that range no boost um and it was still kicking in and out go back to a dead idle i could very slowly accelerate get full performance running 82 83 miles an hour in the florida heat down here um but then it would drop it dropped back down to the low 40s indication supercharger clutch has gone out so what happens i'm gonna take this guy out to show you here so we'll pull this forward back to the rebuild not a good idea these guys right here get chewed up i can't get this thing to focus too well let me see if i can do you any better still shots I'll, I'll post some of those so you can see it if i can get this to there we go okay good focused this is your input drive crankshaft oil pump supercharger this guy right here is chewed up he's not looking pretty um, all the way around this is a this is slippage this is a hardened piece of steel right here this guy is some uh some heavy duty stuff i don't know you could probably find something to do with it use it for a door stop or uh, go inside and do some curling in your kitchen if you got a tile floor i don't know what you guys like to do with these parts when they're blown out so this guy's chewed up let me see if i can get here get this to check out zoom in the edges of these threads are totally blown off of this thing they should come out to a nice round even plane they don't all the way around totally destroyed so you have hardened steel pressing against hardened steel everything wears the sprag wears the inner wears the outer wears so you have these guys and you can see they're just they're gone they're toast didn't overheat i saw no signs of overheating in here but it's a good sign of some good oil in the system it's a good thing so take it apart get this out these guys will start falling out here in a minute i haven't lost any yet but i know i will this is the outer edge also just gone they are chewed up no coming back so in the older days a lot of guys what you could get was you could go in and you could replace this sprag here and sometimes i believe it was the inner portion would get replaced the outer portion also uh, you get here on the outer portion got some heat out here on my bearing i'm not sure what the deal with that is i know there was no slippage i don't know if that's just normal wear or if you've got something else going on here but it's not grooved up but it is it's got some spin on it so but your inner in this area here also very chewed up all the way around it's not looking pretty so i've seen a couple posts lately guys talking about um wanting to get in here and and just replace just the sprag only this clutch uh right here is a situation you've got two horseshoe clips you've got oh we're out of focus let's get back here all right you got your two horseshoe clips here you've got your backing plate here the sprag here roller bearing here this roller bearing is good i don't know what it's good for but it's still good it rolls very freely but again the same along the outside perimeter we've got some stuff going on here that's not normal this in the inside can't get it to focus again it looks good so anyway a lot of guys were they were well, let's just replace just the sprag um i'm not going to tell you it won't work i'm not going to tell you that your ski might start building boost again but you're going to be back in there really quick because these hardened teeth here are now grinding against now uh burn up races they've uh they've had a lot of damage they've had some impacts and things of the such so we'll get these pushed back in here preferably and pop this guy back together maybe it's going to fight me now let's see if i can get this in here well she's not playing nice with me so let's try it another way i had luck with this earlier if i could get the inner into there but anyway it's not going to work i'm not going to sit here and fight it on the video you guys saw it come apart you know how it goes back together anyway if you were to replace simply the innards of this leaving your outer and your drive and replace just that sprag uh you're going to be back in there real quick it's not worth it um i bought my clutch 
pwcmuscle.com big shout out to greg hall joe the guys down there got my parts out quick um they're great guys i've bought a lot of my upgraded performance parts from them highly recommend them uh customer service is excellent so we got this guy back in uh got everything rebuilt ski is ready to go and i'm fixing to leave and head to the river and run it hard for a few hours i have not done that in a while been dead silent in my garage for two weeks staring at this thing every day i go to work I'm ready to get back on the water and hope you guys can do the same thanks for watching